Hello everybody, my name is Eric. Many people have said old school malware was more fun. It, it did more, it did different things. It's not like today where really there's ransomware, there's info stealers. Uh, pretty much for your consumer, there's info stealers and maybe rats. Well, in the old days, they made malware for fun. And we're gonna try some of it out. We're gonna see does the old malware, the golden age malware still work on Windows 11? Now, of course, if you had all of the security features enabled, the answer would almost certainly be no. Is it a threat? But does it work? That's a more interesting question, so we're going to try it out. I've got two tiers, I've got some Windows 9X malware and Windows XP malware. Now there are a lot of reasons, despite Microsoft's great backwards compatibility, why this might not work. Some might not work because it requires 16-bit support, which simply doesn't exist on 64-bit Windows. But more interestingly, there are some core operating system security features, and the fact that malware tends to use undocumented APIs. You know, the Win32 API might be supported 30 years in the past, but Microsoft does not put that effort into supporting internal APIs, especially those predominantly used by malware. So let's take a look. This one is interesting because it's a Trojan. It does exactly what it says it does, but it also emails itself to all of your contacts and tries to delete System32. Now that might be the other one, so let's try it out. Windows Defender has somehow come back again. Okay, let's see if we allow it, if that fixes it. But it seems like because the uh, VS50, I think that's Visual Studio 5? Yeah, no, Windows Defender is fully off. Yeah, so this one, unless that was a fake error message. But it seems like it genuinely doesn't work. So let's try the Pikachu virus. Pokey. Now this one at least seems to partially work. So the Pikachu virus. Okay. Uh, millions of people around the world, I found you. Don't forget to remember this day every day, my friend. Visit us at Pikachu.com. So the graphics all work, which makes sense. I think it's just simple GDI. Uh, now let's see. Does the, does the more interesting payload? Yes! Now it wouldn't really work because autoexe.bat runs much later and with less privileges than it did on Windows 9X, but the Pikachu virus, it works exactly like it used to. It probably wouldn't send itself because I don't think that works anymore. I don't think uh, that email client works anymore, Outlook Express. This is Orange 1. There's Windows 98 Anxiety. Let's see, I actually don't know what this one does. I just saw it recommended. Uh, we're going to allow it, because for some reason, with these really old malware, even when you have Windows Defender fully turned off, it still tries to stop them. Because these will be in every signature database. Oh, that's a bit scary. Uh, oh, so we got a file impactor. That might, that might interfere with our other... That could imply that it works. Let's check. So Pikachu is still running, and the modem thing is running... And then it closes, even without Defender closing it. So I, there's some possibility that's done something. Then we have You Are an Idiot, which might be a recreation. I'm not sure. Uh, we got Pikachu, Orange One. Let's try Orange One. Okay, that's just missing a critical dependency. So, so far, we've had, other than Melting Screen, which just, I think, wouldn't work for a number of reasons. So let's try You Are an Idiot. This one is not that destructive. Really? It doesn't work? Does it not work? Okay, that wasn't expected. That that I would have thought was, well, I wasn't even sure. Okay, so let's try some more. So we got a few fake games. We got Windows Police Pro. That one I'm kind of curious about. This is some sort of rogue AV. And of course, like always, uh, because we cannot get Windows Defender to recognize that it's disabled, even with everything off. Let's see if adding a C exclusion helps. Do you work? Windows Police Pro. I've seen many rogue AVs do work, but what doesn't work is their change of the file association 4.exe. I think we'll actually skip the fake GoldenEye, or not the fake, the fake visual novel because it looks like it's Python. Let's try fake GoldenEye. Now there is a, this is some sort of ransom payload. You've got to put in a key of 111 to get it going again. If it works. Oh, this is looking weird. Why are there so many, almost looks like a fork bomb. But so far, everything's still fine. I'm curious. I'm curious about these worms. Now, I'm 99.9% .9 sure these will not work. Their main function is going to be scanning for other vulnerable systems. We'll try Sasser first. There's some possibility this might trigger a blue screen. Now, small screen is 
trying to save us. Now, these are all, these are extra, of course they're detected. These are the most infamous viruses. Try Blaster. At least Blaster didn't immediately crash. Now, this won't work for a number of reasons. In addition to security patches. The other thing that stopped these networms was internet service providers just hard blocking all of the problematic ports. So residential uh, IP ISPs usually block both ways the ports that this uses, so it, it won't do anything. But it works. But I don't think it installed correctly. So one thing I am sort of curious about is will the Pikachu virus, will, will its payload, I mean it won't do anything, but will it uh, pop up? So it appears autoexec.bat doesn't do anything. Let me just check that. So I guess it doesn't work in... Let's try it here. Okay, but if we did that, it would work. The developer of this malware also made another fatal mistake, and that is the fact that it prompts you. Of course, on anything newer than Windows XP, even when run as administrator, that command will not work. So the interesting thing here is it seems overall... Oh, and I think I forgot the most important. Let's, let's try the fake calculator. Of course, yeah. Yeah, data execution protection will shut that right down. Before around the year 2000, uh, you could actually execute in non-executable parts of the program's memory, which made a lot of exploits, including this one, possible, but it doesn't work anymore. Now, I do kind of wonder if we can make the anxiety one work if we run it as admin. Because none of these, weirdly, none of them prompted, even though they, they wouldn't be expected to work without admin. So this one just plainly doesn't work. This is definitely the cutest one. Now, given our previous rogue didn't work, I want to try another one. And this one says 2015, so it could be a bit newer, but I'm curious if it has the, the main functionality you see in rogues is that they stop you from executing legitimate software. We also got security scanner. Now, this one is detected by small screen, but we can just run it anyway. And what happens? Because that one I did in the other video, and that was on an older version of Windows, so I'm curious if it still works. And if it doesn't, is there any way we can get it working? Did it just delete itself? I wonder if rebooting it will fix it. Oh, well after rebooting, it looks like one of our rogues got right into action. <laughs> this program is dangerous. Uh, apply actions, does that work? It's probably going to demand us to pay before it'll do anything, because that's usually what they do. So then it's going to try and get us to scan online. It's checking LSAS, which if in the mid-2000s you were aware of computer malware, you could fall for this, because you might think, well, yeah, that has been. Oh, so they've found a solution to our critical system files. Windows Security and Control... Now, I'm pretty sure this is fake installer, because at this point, the virus has already installed itself. You notice how it's installing really slowly, and that every tick seems to take the same amount of time, which is not how a real installer works? Yeah, that's because it's a fake. So we've got system security, privacy, utilities, and then we have to reboot again. Protected mode. This has taken over the whole computer. <laughs> no, it wrongly thinks it's Windows 10. This is Windows 11. Yeah, this, this is not, like, this is beyond, this is, like, it is, clearly it's a native window, we can see we could even, control shift escape work. Okay, so we may have found an escape. This is the actual payload. Uh, psych, it's a random letter and number, and it's running out of app data roaming. It's got every single red flag under the sun, and it's a hidden file. Okay, so it says it's removed everything. It's even got the logo for AMD. That's kind of cool. So it's and we we've got registry errors. This thing has like got all the layers of scam. Uh, Microsoft.com/slash/protect. It's actually going to go. To, oh, it does actually go to the Microsoft Defender website. Of course, I don't have the serial code. So it's working at thirty nine percent of its efficiency. Now, does closing this actually work? No. What about like that? I have a feeling, and I could be wrong. I have a feeling that it's actually hijacked the shell set. Yes, that's how it works. So it stops Windows Explorer from loading its donut. Now I wonder if our other, uh, if our security scanner.exe is going to do it. Okay. So this one, I think because it is more modern, it wasn't able to use the old school technique. Now I'm curious, we're going to open 
system terminals auto runs. And I'm curious to see uh, if I'm right. Yes, I am right. So it set itself as the shell. I actually learned you could do this a while ago. There was this thing called, there was this custom shell for Windows, and you, yeah, you can set something else as the shell. So because that's been changed, that is why it comes up every time we reboot. It's basically ransomware at this point, because you can't use the computer without either paying for it or knowing. It's not as clever as the old school ones, and I think that's partially because Microsoft has made changes to make it so that these types of malware cannot take control of the system to the same extent. I'm just going to reboot one more time to see what happens. It's the same every time. Yep, and it's still here. And it kind of has this Windows Vista-esque design with this protected mode. And it does its fake scan. I'm curious what happens if we remove that as shell. Does the system figure out to go back to the default? And everything is fixed. So that's going to be all from me for now. So the overall answer is it depends. Surprisingly, I my assumption going into this was the Windows XP malware was going to work and the Windows 98 malware was not going to work, but it almost seems like we got the opposite. A lot of Windows 98 malware will not work, a lot of Windows XP malware will not work, but anything that doesn't rely on low-level removed system functions should still work. Windows has a lot of backwards compatibility. A lot of stuff that works will be less destructive. And the main holdup to really old malware running is libraries that you might be able to track down. So I wouldn't fear old malware. The most dangerous, like, older malware that can exist is definitely file infectors, purely because they can get trafficked around and you might actually run into them. Old networms really relied on their ability to networm, and those exploits get patched quickly. So that's the overall conclusion here. If you want to see more retro malware, we can, of course, run it on period correct windows as well. Let me know in the comments below. That's all from me for now. Bye.